what is the difference between purgatory and hell? There's really only one thing. The difference between purgatory and hell is hope. Those souls that find themselves in purgatory after death, they know. They know that soon, by our prayers and through the torment that they are suffering, that they will be before the Lord who they desire. They will see God face to face in heaven. And the souls in hell, they know that they will never, never see the face of God. In hell, there is no hope. But in purgatory, hope is everything. Now, you might be asking yourself, why on the first day of Advent is Father Gabriel talking about hell and purgatory? Well, first of all, of course, it's always good to talk about hell and purgatory. We need to be reminded about these things every once in a while. But secondarily, because it brings about another thought that helps us make sense of this gospel passage. And that is, what is the difference between purgatory and here? It's very simple. The difference between purgatory and here is that while we are here in this life, we can grow in merit and in love. In purgatory, this is not possible. When you die, when the soul separates from the body, the possibility of growth in charity pauses. It halts. You only have this time, this time that God has given you in this world to grow in merit and in charity. If you are so blessed to attain heaven, your soul, like a container, will receive to overflowing God's abundant goodness, his love. And as you contemplate him for all eternity, that love will inflame your soul to complete and total satisfaction. You will, in fact, be brought to perfection. Yet here on earth, we can actually make it so that in heaven we have a greater share in God's perfection, a greater share in God's love. But only here. So that doesn't give us much time. Eighty, ninety years at best. That's how much time we have to perfect the moral virtues in our life and to grow in charity, to participate fully in that charity which was given to us at baptism. But that's not a lot of time. Some of the young people here might be saying you're insane. You ask any octogenarian, it's not a lot of time. It's not a lot of time. So we don't have time to rest on our laurels, to sit around and not take the faith seriously. 
We must spend as much energy as possible, day in and day out, working on the moral virtues in our lives and participating in that share of faith, hope, and love that God has given us. We must, as the Collect says here, run forth. Run forth to meet your Christ. But it's so easy to get distracted. It's so easy. Especially in this time of year. In this time of year, everything seems to be working against us. We begin this period of distraction, of course, with our most Christian pagan feast, Thanksgiving, where we gouge ourselves, eat and drink for tomorrow we might die, literally because it's Black Friday. And then we're preparing ourselves for Christmas. But the way that so many of us prepare ourselves for Christmas is by going to the stores and swiping our credit cards and delaying our payment for those gifts until the new year. And then all of a sudden we get that bill. We go, oh, something new to worry about. And so we don't have time, either now or then, to focus on the things that are most important. The love of God. The growth in the virtues. This time that we begin today, Advent, is a penitential season. Just like Lent is designed to prepare ourselves Prepare our soul for our Lord and the celebrations that are to come. In Lent, of course, it's Easter. In Advent, through penance and good works, we prepare our soul for Christmas. Don't allow yourself to become distracted in this time. The church has given you this time to prepare for our incarnate Lord. Make sure that in this season, you add to your list of things to do the corporal and the spiritual works of mercy. Make sure in this season that you take time to participate in the sacrament of penance. Attend an Advent mission. Pray more. Spend an extra 30 minutes praying, reading scripture. But most importantly, do it for the love of God. In Lent, there's a gravity to the penance because what is fixed in our mind are the ashes that we receive on Ash Wednesday and the cross that we will venerate on Good Friday. Here in Advent, there isn't that same gravity. We look forward to the anticipation of the cross, the manger. The anticipation of the burial shroud, the swaddling cloth that our Lord was wrapped in. And so, as we anticipate our Lord, we must prepare a space for him in our hearts. We must prepare a space for him in our homes. We must prepare a space for him in our souls. We must prepare a space for him in our world.
so that we can do the one thing necessary. Grow in love. And as we grow in love, we will receive the fruit of that love. Which is the very thing that this church year, beginning today, is dedicated to. Mercy. And as we grow in mercy, we will be shown mercy. So take all your distractions, all your trials. Take everything that you have. Add to it new works of penance, new works of mercy, new acts of love and devotion. Gather them together and place them with the wise men at the feet of our Lord at Christmas.